Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this. This is one of my up air controllers. Now, in one of the last videos you seen when I was out flying this, I was having problems with the screen. So I decided I'm going to take this apart and see what it's all about and see if there's something in there I can fix because it seems like if I jiggle this, this wire back here coming into the back of the uh, monitor itself that that it sort of works so I think something's loose in here or something along that line rather simplistic to fix so I figured I'd take you guys along for the journey and that way if you guys are having this problem you know uh, maybe I can show you how to fix it maybe I won't be able to fix it but you guys will know so long story short this connects with what looks to be a USB port and I'm assuming that um, the idea is is that there's maybe some sort of digital connection digital processing in here and it's picking up power uh, from here like a standard USB port um, again just a guess so we're gonna take it apart we're gonna see a little bit more of what's in here now it's attached to the uh, main controller by this small Allen screw and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work to remove that and see if we can just take this screen right off so I'm going to my fat fingers are in the way sorry I'm simply just going to remove this screw and it's a rather long screw okay so I've got this part and I need to get this out of here and so we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna try to separate this from the unit sounds like easier said than done so uh, there also appears to be some sort of little shim in here too. So there's a little brass shim. I'm gonna set that over here with uh, that piece. I'm assuming that probably shims it out. Oh, there's two brass shims and I just dropped one on the floor. So apparently, you know, that's kind of a nice, cause apparently there's brass shim. Ah, I see. So, uh, Inside here, it's recessed on both, so there's brass shims going here. So, it, you know, you know, that's one of the things that surprises me in some of this Chinese stuff, how they will go through something like this, you know, the brass against the metal, versus just, you know, having one piece and who really cares. Um, anyways, the way it looks is that there is uh, two main pieces to the way this comes together. One are these four uh, Allen bolts on the back here, which are the same size. Um, I think this is like a two millimeter uh, Allen wrench. And then there's um, three uh, Phillips head screwdrivers. So I tell you what, I'm gonna, I really don't know how this comes apart. So I'm gonna have to do some experimenting. So I'm gonna probably fast forward through this section so you guys see how I do it because there's probably gonna be some learning experience and I don't wanna ramble for all this time. So uh, from here, I'm just gonna fast forward and then come back once I get it apart. Okay, so we're back. Uh, long story short, this uh, bezel just holds on there and pops off. You've probably kind of seen that in the time lapse. So there's there's little grips around here, so be careful when you pop it off, but it doesn't seem to be major. And here's the small electronics. There doesn't seem to be much back here. And this ribbon connector connects to this ribbon here, and it just has an LCD panel right here. Now, I don't see really anything loose here. Uh, it looks like it only connects via three wires, so I don't think there, I'm not sure if there's any digital signaling processing here at all, or it's, I think it's just a straightforward monitor. Um, since it's getting power, I'm thinking this white wire might be bad, and so what I may have to do is kind of trace this back and see how this actually um, comes into this unit and kind of set it up again and see what happens um, because I think it's this white wire that might be bad so I'm gonna play around with that and then I'll come back and show you guys what I find okay so I'm back so a couple things that that are interesting so one of the pieces that I did to give myself some room is I actually connected the monitor via a USB cable to this monitor so this is sort of the one of the interesting pieces. If you wanted to kind of separate the monitor from the control, 
Um, it appears you can use a USB cable. The other thing I discovered is I believe my problem with this was simply the ribbon cable connection to the controller on the back was loose. Because as you saw in the first section of the video, I had um, actually, uh, it actually came apart rather easy, separated the controller from the, uh, uh, the LCD. And I'm trying to get this back open so I can maybe show this a little bit. Uh, and, and I'll try zooming in, in on this a little bit. Let me get this up here. So what happens is this ribbon cable here connects to this connector. Now what happens is there is latches here and here and it goes underneath. And what happens is this pulls forward on both sides and this ribbon cable slips in. And then what happens is these go back forward to lock in the ribbon cable to the controller, if you will. Now... I think what was happening is this was loose, and then when I would move this wire, um, it would actually move this whole circuit board, because this circuit board just sits loose in here. This circuit board is not taped down or anything to the back of the unit. It just floats in the back, so this thing can get jostled, and, and uh, uh, this can come loose. So I actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of packing tape underneath here because this is uh, this is metal uh, the back of this LCD screen I'm sure for uh, uh, EMI uh, protection and again there's nothing here that locks this board in place so what I'm going to do is put a piece of tape underneath here then probably put a piece of tape over it to kind of hold it in place so let, let's go ahead and see what that looks like when I'm done Okay, so here we are back. So I time-lapsed me putting the tape on, so I just used some packing tape to insulate the back. Now, there is an insulator, as you may saw in the time-lapse, on the back. It doesn't cover the complete uh, back of it, though. It kind of like is more of a standoff insulator. So this is where I felt a little bit more comfortable placing the, um, uh, the tape underneath just just to be doubly sure, sort of built in britches, if you will. And then I put a piece over the top. Now, I don't think there's going to be a big heat issue here. I mean, I, you know, I fly this, it gets maybe 20 to 40 minutes of use. Um, it doesn't feel like it's getting hot as it's, it's working, so I don't think the tape's going to be an issue. I also may put a piece of, um, I think what I'm going to do, too, is uh, against this back piece, put a piece of foam tape, um, in there for this to kind of press against. So let, let's also do that. So I've got some double-sided foam tape. Now I'm just going to take a piece about the size of this metal, roughly, and then cut it off and... Uh, yeah, that's it. And I'm going to stick this to the back here. I'm going to peel this off. Now, one of the things I'm going to have to make sure I get this on here right the first time, because it's going to stick, obviously. Uh, so I want to get that on, and bingo, I'm in. And then what I'm going to do is now, when I go to put this back on, since it, it cantilevers, I don't know if cantilever is the right word, but it'll go back on this way. So the screws are on this side, and then. What's going to happen is this is just going to pop on. And I am going to turn it around. And I'm going to take my screws. And these are tiny. You notice if you watch my other channel, I, uh, I use these little tiny cups all the time for holding parts. Uh, so I don't get them mixed up and then a lot of times I will use multiple cups to separate my parts. They're cheap, it's easy. I highly recommend doing. So I just want to get this back in here. <clears throat> and there we go. So it's working. It's the right way up. So you can see my voltage of the controller. I'm getting white noise from the receiver because obviously I don't have the quadcopter turned on. And I can shake this, and it's not doing anything where before if I was wiggling the wires. So that's what was happening, is that cable inside, that main cable was coming loose. 
and that's where I was having my problem. So rather simple, easy fix, and with that extra stuff in there, obviously it's going to, to hold it. So your mileage may vary, but again, if you're running into this problem with the up air, it's a rather simple fix, just reseating the cable and then doing a couple of those things. I could have probably reset, reset, reseated the cable, I'll spit it out, and it would have worked just fine, but now I've got the extra belt and britches protection of now that board's not going to move around in there and I'm not going to have a problem while flying. So hopefully you found this interesting and handy. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, hit me up in the comments below if you have questions. Subscribe button's coming up over there. And hey, we'll see you in the next video and we'll go out flying. Cheers.